Welcome to this instructional video on using AWS Identity and Access Management uh, by Backspace Academy. So in this video, we're just going to go through creating users uh, using the IAM console and then creating a group to contain those users uh, that we can assign those users to and giving that group permissions so that when users are assigned to a group, they inherit those permissions from the group. We're also going to look at IAM, IAM roles, what they are, why they're important and uh, how you would use them and the benefits of using those. We're then going to look at creating an account password policy. And then finally, we're going to uh, download a credentials report so that we can see uh, a bird's eye view of our account and, uh, and the credentials and users and roles and groups that are uh, assigned within that account. So the first thing we do is uh, jump into the IAM console. So under administration and security, we'll click on IAM. Okay, so your uh, IAM console would probably look a little bit different to this because we've, uh, uh, well, I've, I've created a, a user for a, a lab that we had previously and, and a role there as well. Uh, so just looking here, we'll give you some uh, security status, which is, uh, which is quite uh, quite good so the first thing there and, and most importantly is activate activate uh, multi-factor authentication on your root account so you need to make sure that that, that happens uh, this is again this is just to uh, an account that we just set up just for the lab we don't use it for anything else and uh, it doesn't really have anything inside it um, but certainly you need to enable MFA on your root account uh, for your own personal use uh, and of course, for your own, uh, your employer to make sure that uh, that they're safe as well. So uh, that's <clears throat> that's essential. Uh, we look there uh, creating uh, individual IAM users. So we've created an IAM user there, uh, but we don't have any groups to assign permissions to. So we have a user here um, that doesn't have any permissions assigned to that user directly, uh, and we're going to create a group to put that user in. Uh, and we're going to apply an IAM password policy as well. So the first thing we're going to do is create a group to put this user in. So we just go into groups, create new group. So we're just going to call them uh, this, this group developers. Uh, go to the next step. So we need to attach a, um, a policy. So that will define what permissions uh, are available to uh, these developers. So you probably look at um, attaching a policy, a restrictive policy maybe, but we're just going to give uh, full administrator access for our developers. And we'll click on the next step. So that's uh, what we're going to do there. Group name developers and policies administrator access. And we'll create that group. Okay, so there it is. So the next thing we can do is, uh, is we can add our users uh, to that group. Okay, so there's one of our, there's our user, and we're going to add that user in. Okay, so we click on it now. So there we can see we have the uh, ARN for the for the group, and we've got our user that's been added to that group, and we've got the permissions here, which is um, administrator access. So that looks fine. So now we're going to add another user in there. So go into user, create a new user. Okay, so just going to call that user J Smith. Uh, we want to generate an access key for that user so that they have access uh, through the uh, software development kits and uh, for doing um, REST and SOAP uh, requests and uh, also for using the CLI uh, tools as well. Okay, so that's been uh, successfully created and then what we would want to do is to uh, download these security cr credentials, so we download those, um, and so there's the the access key ID and the secret access key for J Smith. Okay, so there we have another user there, but he's not assigned to a group. Okay, so we'll just sign this and user actions add user to a group and we'll select that group and add to groups. So now when we have a look at him, 
is going to be part of the developers group and there we have that and inherits we didn't actually assign any access permissions there um, but because he is in the developers group he inherits administrator access okay so the next thing we're going to look at is creating a password policy for for the account so we're going to go into account settings and we're going to apply a password policy in there so we're going to require at least one uppercase letter one lowercase letter and one number so the whole heap of things there that you can add as well but that's pretty normal for most uh, most passwords so we'll apply that password policy there and that's been done so we go back into our users and let's have a look at Jay Smith again so he doesn't have a password set so let's have a look here and has password no so let's go back in there user actions manage password okay so we're going to assign an auto generated password for this person and we're going to require them to create a new password the next time they sign in so it's going to apply that and then that will generate a password for for that uh, that user so we would email that uh, password out to that user they would log in and then they would be asked to change their password after logging in so that's Jay Smith all set up there ready to go so with uh, users they won't be uh, logging in directly uh, into the root account so they'll have a different login address so uh, if you just go into dashboard here and you can see here there is an IAM user sign-in link so those users would use their IAM username and their password that this uh, that's been generated for them and uh, and then they would sign in and then they would be asked to change their um, their password so just go into into that and have a look and see what it's like okay so there you can see that uh, it'll have the account details there and and, uh, and you can sign into that with your username and password okay so the next thing we're going to have a look at is is roles so roles are very important because uh, you use them in a number of, wa number of ways and and uh, the main way you would use them uh, would be for for example if you had a, a virtual private cloud and you didn't want uh, those resources inside that VPC to be accessed directly uh, you could set up a bastion host inside that VPC and and you would have to connect into that bastion host and then that bastion host would have access uh, within the VPC another benefit of roles is that you can use uh, roles to delegate access to your account um, to users in other AWS accounts so uh, roles provide a very uh, useful uh, service uh, for security and quite essential uh, to ensuring security especially in a VPC environment so uh, what we'll do now is jump into roles and we'll uh, have a look at that so we've already uh, I've already got here a NAT role so uh, that's a, a NAT instance or a role assigned to a NAT instance uh, that is used by databases to access outside of EPC into the uh, wider internet uh, to download updates uh, for their application and whatever so I'm just going to create a new role so I'm just going to call this uh, Bastion and next step and so we're going to assign a role to a Bastion host which is an EC2 instance so we've got here allows EC2 instances to call AWS services on your behalf so if you connect to an EC2 instance that has uh, this role assigned to it you'll be able to uh, connect through to other resources within that VPC so it's going to select that one and we're going to attach a policy for that so for that EC2 instance so we will give that administrator accesses again okay so there we have uh, the review so we've uh, created a bastion role um, we're calling it uh, bastion uh, the role name is there and uh, it's for the EC2 service and it is for administrator access so we'll create role and there it is 
So the next thing we're going to look at now is to uh, have a look at a credentials report which is very important when you have a large organisation with a lot of users, a lot of roles being created, a lot of resources being used and whatever. So it's very good to have a credentials report to see what's going on. So um, we'll just download that. So we just go into credentials report and we'll download that report. Okay, so the report's downloaded. I'm just going to open that up. Okay, so just quickly format it. Okay, so we can see there we've got the user, uh, we've got our root account here, uh, the ARN for our root account, uh, when that, that was created, which is basically when our account was actually created, uh, password was when last used, uh, and we've got the same here for our pcody-lab that we originally had before we started. So one thing to notice here is that uh, <clears throat> the actual user that we created uh, just now is not appearing on here. And the reason for that is that, that uh, these are updated every four hours. So if you've created a, a, um, a, a status report in, in, the, in the last four hours, it will show the one that you've created previously. So you need to wait another four hours before you get an updated report. So uh, if you find stuff's missing from there, it just means you need to give a bit more time uh, to allow uh, the AWS service to compile a new report and get it out to you. So that's another uh, very good tool there that uh, helps you keep a, a control of, 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 uh, of, of, of your, uh, your users. And it's good to see you know, when you're password was last changed or when, we, when it was last used so it's good to get rid of uh, accounts that are no longer required and uh, you know people have left the the, uh, the organization and uh, and they haven't been removed from the system so very good tool there so that's all we need to show now on uh, on IAM um, so I'll see you in the next lesson